Just the physical wear and tear. It's pretty brutal. Because I'm a woman. What do you think, I cannot work that hard? You know, I think we are better than guys, so. They are often children driven to be champions. You can do it. You understand me? I know you can do it. You go to him because he's going to get you where you want to go. Families consumed by a dream. We're still paying off credit cards. There are some wounds that will never heal. Seven stories of sacrifice. The first U.S. women's gymnastics team in history to win Olympic gold. The Magnificent Seven. She is hurt badly. Anything to win. You could feel it in the air, and you could hear it with the crowd. It was 10 years ago. It, sometimes it feels like it was just yesterday. Other times it feels like it was so long ago that it almost didn't happen. <laughs> in 1996, seven girls accomplished a first in American history. They won the team gold medal in women's gymnastics at the Summer Olympic Games in Atlanta, Georgia. They all came from very diverse backgrounds, socioeconomically, racially, and yet they all blended together to make uh, a remarkable team. They would come to be known as the Magnificent Seven. Shannon Miller from Edmond, Oklahoma. Dominique Dawes from Silver Spring, Maryland. Carrie Strug from Tucson, Arizona. J.C. Phelps from Greenfield, Indiana. Amy Chow from San Jose, California. Dominique Mociano from Hollywood, California. And team captain Amanda Borden from Cincinnati, Ohio. We were just a unit. It was like, Arr. we were ready just to pounce. No American women's gymnastics team had won Olympic gold before Atlanta in 1996. And no American women's gymnastics team has won gold since. The Magnificent Seven won the gold in one of the closest, most contentious competitions in Olympic history. Take a look at history. Women's artistic gymnastics, as it is officially known, entered the Olympics as a team event in 1928. The first stars were former ballet dancers. Gymnastics is, is a unique sport. It's absolutely unique. What kind of sport can offer dance, music, beautiful, uh, graceful movements, with quality, high performance that one people are, even now today, they say, God, that's, that's, that's not even human. The sport is comprised of four disciplines. The athletes perform short routines on four different apparatus. The vault. Gymnasts launch themselves into the air, pushing off the vault to execute aerial acrobatics. The uneven bars. Athletes perform a series of 10 intricate maneuvers between the two bars while in constant motion. The beam. Gymnasts perform a routine of up to 90 seconds while maintaining extreme body control and balance. And the floor. Athletes create an artistic routine of tumbles and somersaults to music. At the 1996 Olympic Games in Atlanta, the team competition was held over two days using what is known as a 7-6-5 format. Seven girls on each team, six perform each discipline and are judged by an international panel and of the six individual scores, the five highest count as the team score. Every event that we went to, it was just, it got better and better and got louder and louder. Uh, the ups and downs was dramatic. The Russians up, uh, Romanian second, uh, US third, US second, Russian third, then uh, suddenly US first, and they still competing. 
Americans would take the lead into the last event on the final day of the competition. For most of the world, it was shocking that the Americans even had a chance to win in the first place. During the preceding five decades, the women's team from the Soviet Union, or Unified States as it was known after the superpower collapsed, had won every Olympic competition it had entered, 10 gold medals in all. I think for many years there was the concept that we could never beat the Russians because of their system. Those were state-supported systems where they would take finely tuned athletes that had the right physical and mental makeup and they would channel them into a centralized program where you might only have 30 or 40 girls but you'd have 12 coaches and it was paid for by the government. The first gymnast to capture the American public's imagination was Russian. Olga Corbett's performance included a memorable backflip on the balance beam. In 1972, the world became captivated by this uh, incredible acrobatic young talent. And four years later, of course, the world was looking for who is the next Olga, and Nadia Comaneci came along. She scored the first perfect 10. Essentially, she was so good that she forced the judges to rewrite the rules. Our biggest competitors at my time were the Russians. And uh, we didn't think too much about the Americans. <laughs> In 1976, Komenich, the Romanian wonder girl, captivated the world and conquered the Soviets in Montreal. She won a gold medal in the individual all-around competition. Her team won silver, but the Romanians, coached by legendary Bela Karoli, would challenge the Soviet stranglehold on team gold. We came from a very strong uh, team-oriented program from Romania, and I did uh, generate at that time the very first uh, school of gymnastics uh, in Eastern Europe, uh, in Romania. Caroli and his wife defected in 1981 and started over in America. Everybody in the world was very curious why Romanians are so good, and uh, there was nothing that was magic, you know, it was just a lot of work. Those young ladies were strong and they were tough. And that's one of the things Bella Caroli contributed to our program here. He said, you have to have a physical fitness foundation that you can land short on a double backflip. And most kids would have to go to the doctor. Those Romanians, they landed short, they jumped right back up and they kept going because they were so physically fit. For the right, right. Caroli's influence would change the dynamic of American gymnastics, starting with one of his very first students. He had the results. He was one of the first guys to say, yes, I know they're girls, but they can be tough and strong and they can be champions, and I'm going to show you how to do it. OK, let's go. <laughs> you go to him because you know he's going to get you where you want to go, but he's really tough. Las Vegas, lights, clubs, games of chance, but behind the she is the most famous gymnast in American history. Everybody wanted to be like Mary Lou. In 1984, Mary Lou Retton became an American hero and a household name. The Olympics came to Los Angeles that year. The 16-year-old Retton had a legend in her corner, the coach who had guided Nadia Comaneci to superstardom. Bella Corley, of course, was working with Mary Lou. She was a unique specimen, you know? And so he had a lot to work with with Mary Lou. But I think Bella raised the bar for everybody. He and his wife, Marta, had defected from Romania just three years earlier. For the right. They brought with them a hardline Eastern European discipline to a sport predominantly geared toward young girls. When Bella defected, everything changed. For the Romanian gymnast, we worked out six hours a day because that's how that's what we were taught to. Starting with 1981, he tried to put that kind of program here. The long hours paid off. Mary Lou became the first American gymnast to win a gold medal, taking the all-around individual title. She won five medals in all, including silver in the team competition. Bella's former team, the Romanians, won the gold. 
That was the biggest boost in the history